And the man, Matt Safino, is with us now. Matt, today I was walking around to get a little bit of yogurt outside. Cold and windy. It definitely feels like winter. And now you're talking about a bomb cyclone? Yeah, cold even before you had the yogurt, too, I bet, Pat, right? <laughs> it was, I, yes. It was cold. I mean, the snow level came down to the lowest of the fall so far, down to about 2,000 feet. Occasionally, it got lower in the shower. So, yes, it was a cold day for sure. We never made it out of the 40s. But let's talk about the bomb cyclone because it sounds so scary. And every time one of these ramps up and spins up off our coast or off the East Coast, as they happen there too, it gets a lot of attention because of the name, right? And granted, they are strong storms, but let me explain what this is. And this has been in the meteorological vocabulary for decades. So this isn't something new. It just, I don't know, five years ago, got a lot of attention somewhere, and now it's all over the place. A bomb cyclone is when you have an area of low pressure, a storm, develop explosively. That's where the phrase bomb comes from, from that explosive development, right? So what is that defined by? Well, it defined, it's defined by how much the core, the inner core of the pressure drops in a certain amount of time. So we use 24 hours and it has to drop 24 millibars in 24 hours. I know what you're thinking. What's a millibar? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I knew it. So it's a unit of measure of pressure. You know, when you fill up, you put air in your tires, you go to roughly 30, maybe 35, maybe 38 PSI right. pounds yep. per square inch. Millibar is exactly that. It's just a different unit of measure. 30 pounds per square inch is only about two millibars. If you think about that, we're talking about pressure, the average pressure off across the entire planet, not too low, not too high, you know, Goldilocks pressure. 1,013 millibars. Air has weight. Hmm. It's measured all the way up through the column of the sky. You just don't feel it because, you know, it's air, obviously. But we measure it with barometers, and when it drops that much, that fast, that's a bomb cyclone. Now, this one is going to go from about 1,014 millibars this morning to down to about 950 millibars tomorrow. That's a drop of like 63 millibars in 24 hours way exceeding the threshold for a bomb cyclone. So that's what we're talking about. But will it bring us just disastrous you know, weather? It won't, and here's the reason why. Do you see this line right here, that line of longitude? That's 130 degrees west. What we watch for, we meteorologists here in the Northwest, is we watch for storms to get inside or east of 130 degrees longitude. This one's not going to. It gets relatively close, but it's not gonna get close enough to the coast to give us super strong winds like, you know, December 1995 or even some storms after that. Of course, the big one, the Columbus Day storm back in 1960. This will actually get deeper than the Columbus Day, stor uh, Columbus Day, st uh, stor Columbus Day storm, uh, but it won't get as close to the coast. And the path is different too. Notice how these isobar lines are all oriented over us north south. That's more of an easterly wind direction. To get really strong winds in the Willamette Valley, you want to see low pressure go inland to our north, and you want to see these isobars oriented more east-west. That's a strong south wind. So the setup isn't perfect for a strong wind event in the valley, but because this thing is so strong and close enough, we're still going to get some good winds, Pat. Wow. I <laughs> <laughs> There's so much that I've just learned there. I also want to know if uh, how long is this going to be around? If people are starting to travel, say, this coming weekend for Thanksgiving holiday, is this going to be in play? No, 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 no. This will this move is, on. In this fact, is coming gone? Yeah, let me show you. In fact, I'll run the graphic out here. So this is tomorrow night at 930. That's when we're going to get our strongest winds. As we go into Wednesday morning, it begins to weaken. And then notice how it moves back to the west. So that's typical for really strong storms off the uh, west coast here. They'll spin up, they'll get close, and then they kind of roll on back to the west like that. And so look at now we don't have hardly any of those pressure lines over us at all by Thursday. So this will be a 12 hour event for us tomorrow late afternoon into early on Wednesday morning. It'll get breezy here in the valleys, but a gust of about 45, not gusts of 95, which is, you know, what you can get with a strong bomb cyclone if the pattern was a little bit different. All right. Thanks for explaining that and calming my nerves. That makes me feel much better. Glad you feel better. <laughs> we'll be back right after this.